Hey Potter, this is Key from Echo Ceramics and here's the second half of finishing or trimming your juicer. So here's the juicer that we made the video before and then I'm going to show you how to do the trimming and cut out for the center part of it. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and actually go ahead and center. So I'm going to go ahead and tap center. So for example, if it's not center like this, I'm just going to tap center on my choose part of it like so. Again, I'm going to take a sponge, wet down the bat or the wheel head, and use some anchor clay to secure it in place. Doesn't need much, so I'm going to go ahead and anchor that down so it doesn't shift or move or lift up, whatever that's going to interfere. So to make the edging on the juicer part here, you could do pretty much anything but I simply use a camper tool of R2 to carve this out and I do with the wheel turning, meaning wheels moving while I'm carving into it. If you don't feel comfortable doing so, you can just simply go ahead and just carve straight up and down and that's easy enough to do and it'll work equally well. But if you want to do the spiral part of it, you just press in, hold, and turn the wheel, and then just bring it up. And then keep turning, and then just bring it up to the center. Just like so. And deeper groove you make, better it is. And just systematically follow the wheel speed, and you'll see that one after another. I'll start to create a groove. And at first it doesn't look so good, but if you just keep going with it, you'll see that it works all just fine. And like anything, practice will make it better. always stop the wheel and then go back into it. If you don't happen to do one that great, all in all at the end it will look fantastic. So let's see, I think I need maybe five more. So I don't like these flat areas so always want to carve those guys out. And then this flat area too, I don't have to, you don't always have to come up all the way to the top. You could also do that, and then that right there is a flat area. So I'm gonna take care of that as well. So I'll do right on the center. And then this flat area is minor, but we'll go ahead and sharpen that up as well. And then some of these guys are a little light, so I'm gonna go ahead and recarve it a little bit. And then do one here. And there you go. And then if you have anything that you want to trim on the interior part of it, you can certainly do that as well. So hypothetically, this is a little bump there that I want to remove. You can just simply trim that out as well. So, <clears throat> so when I create these sharp edges on the juicer part of it, I don't generally smooth or soften it with the sponge. So I like to keep it rough so when you actually glaze it's going to get softer and it won't juice as well so you want to make sure you leave it nice and sharp edging. So leave that alone and then but I go ahead and sponge out the base like so and then just need to do the underside of it but beforehand you could leave the spot part of it alone or we could actually go ahead and make this a little softer and a little more refined by taking these sharp corners away. So I can just go ahead and take a knife and scoop that out. And clean up the tools work really well. So just taking that little bump or the right angle and soften that up. And just take that out. And then let it 
leaf land and the rest of it easy enough to do with the sponge and then just sponge it out pretending that you're pouring the juice out all right to trim the other side just take it off remove the anchor pieces And since we can just simply put it upside down because the, the juicer part gets in the way, we have to use a chuck. And if you don't know what chuck is, chuck is just a, a cylinder with an hourglass shape. And then you can just throw this yourself. And I made a video for that as well, so you can check that out. And we'll just simply fit this in. So like so. So see how this chuck kind of fits in? So there's a little movement and a little space which is perfectly fine and if that bothers you and if you didn't want to have that difference so if I put that on here, on here it's going to move a little so and we go ahead and center this and then go ahead and trim this way or if this slight movement bothers you you can take an old t-shirt or some thin cloth cheese cloth work well you can put it over the chuck, place this over, so it actually has a little bit of a tighter fit. So you could do one, two, or three, or however many you need to fit it in there. So once you set it, because of the spout part, you can trim very far at all. So all we want to do is just clean up the footed part. So when you throw this, just plan on not trimming very much at all. So we'll just go ahead and do the footed part of it. Whoop. And I didn't center the chuck, so it moves. So if you're worried about chuck moving like so, you may simply want to anchor that as well. So, you know what, let me go ahead and anchor that. The bat is still wet, and the anchors are still wet from the time before. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these anchors over the chuck so the chuck doesn't move. And then go back to the trimming the foot. I like to bevel the foot on these guys. Bevel meaning I just want to angle it ever so in a couple of degrees. Instead of having it perpendicular to the shape, I want to kind of follow the shape. And then we're going to do the bare minimum amount of trimming. Trimming down because of the spout. And then some people like to trim through the center part. So where you can see the juicer part of it. Me, I like to keep it flat and have a footing for it. And mainly because I don't want to collect any dirty dishwater, or if I put it in the dishwasher, I don't want to have a big pool of water in the middle. I also just feel that it feels a little nicer and finished. And just try to trim as flat and even as you can. And my standard rule for trimming is just to bulk of the trimming, most of the trimming work, with a small trimming tool and then go back with a larger tool to do the finishing touches, right? So I got most of the depth there. I have plenty of room to glaze. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the foot ever so slightly round by just taking the either corner, inside and outside, and then just roll that from one side to the other. And for the finishing touch, I'll just go ahead and use the do all. And I mainly use the curly side of the do all tool. You can certainly use the square side, but eh, I don't know. Uh, I don't find myself using the square side as much. Nothing wrong with it. I just prefer the curly side of it. So if you want, you can use the square side, perfectly fine. I mean, I do find that square side is really handy if I do want to make a right angle. Alright, I'll try the square side once more. Just for the finishing touches. Just blow that out. And sounds right. We'll 
We'll sponge all this out. Make it nice and smooth. Burnish the foot. And of course, lastly, because of the juicer being enclosed and we put, once we throw it, we put an air hole at the top so that it doesn't crack, it lets the air out. And for the firing purpose, we do need an air for to escape through somewhere and preferably in the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole on the bottom. And me, I personally don't try to hide it. I really don't, I don't think anybody else will notice. So standard rules, when you poke, poke the same spot three times. And then to make the hole look smaller, you just rub it over. Just don't close it off completely. And you can see there's a tiny little dot. And that's how small it is. And then handle's optional. I do like to put a handle and handle generally goes up high, up back, so it's easier to grab. So that's purely up to you. So maybe I'll do a video on making handle and attaching a handle to the juicer. We'll see. Alright, thanks for watching.